Welcome back everyone. Thanks for sharing and liking my uh, video tutorials because I noticed there's definitely a gain in traction on my channel. So thank you for that. Today we're going to talk about linear regression, but more specifically multilinear regression. Previously we talked about how an explainer variable can actually help you figure out what the response number is. So if I wanted to say, hey, the miles per gallon can be explained by the displacement, or the miles per gallons can be explained by the weight. We've only really taken into account one feature to be that explainer. So in this video, I think we'll maybe dive a little bit more into using more than one feature to see if, if they're relevant in our predictions. Let's just start slow and we'll get back to that. Um, so let's do a, my data is equal to MT cars, our favorite data set, right? So just load that data in there. Let's take a quick peek at it. I'm just going to click on, you can see, well, no, you can't. <laughs> I'm going to click on it. You know where it, where it is by now, but I'll, I'll go ahead and put me down here. So miles per gallon, you know, it's, it's the first column of data here with the various vehicles. We have cylinders, displacement, horsepower, drat, all these things. I want to be careful though. Some of these are not actually numeric. They look numeric because they're numbers, but they're actually categorical variables like gear and carb. There's no 4.1 or 4.3. It's not really a numeric. It's a category. It's, hey, this has four gears. This has three gears. This has five gears, right? And they can't be anywhere in between. So we just have to be careful and cognizant of that as we pursue this. So we've got an idea of what kind of features we have. And again, we really don't need to start doing anything until we, until we plot these. So let's go ahead and add our library, ggplot2, command enter on that. And let's just go ahead and plot a couple of these just for our sanity. And so we're going to do a ggplot. And we will do the data is equal to my data. That's my pretty much, that's how I do it. Aesthetic, we want the x-axis to equal. Let's try displacement first, and then the y, we're gonna predict. So the response is the y is the uh, miles per gallon. Simple enough. Now don't forget we have to add a geometry to this layout, and that was gonna be geom point for scatter, scatter plot. And that's about it for now. Let's just do a run that. I will disappear and move away from the plot area. I'll leave it small this time, but you can kind of see, looks like displacement on the horizontal axis and miles per gallon. You can you could kind of fit a line through there, right? You can see it's a downward slope, you know? So if, if I think I have it back, I have to do it backwards on the camera, but it's, it's a negative slope. So there's a negative re uh, correlation. As displacement goes up, miles per gallon goes down. Okay, cool. Now let's just play around. Let's change it to uh, weight instead of displacement, WT. And we're just exploring here. That looks like it could be a linear relationship as well. Let's try um, drat. And these are just random. I don't want to do the, f the features yet, but the drat does not look uh, linearly correlated. So that's the key. Linear means they fall in a line. It does not look like DRAT is linear. You can just look at that and tell. All right, knowing that, let's just play around a little bit here. Let's change, we'll keep that as DRAT. Let me show you something here. Now, let's create a model with the DRAT and only one variable. So it's just a basic linear model. So we'll call this model one and we'll set it equal to the linear model of, we wanna explain miles per gallon explained by the tilde, just drat, and of course our data is equal to my data. Simple enough. I'm just gonna show you a couple things to help you along here. So let's type in model one. You're gonna see the equation down at the bottom is, you have an intercept and a, and a weight to put onto drat, right? That weight that you put onto drat is like the slope, because there's only one, there's only one uh, weight and that's on drat. Okay, so we have that. That doesn't tell us a whole lot now. So let's just do a summary of model one. Summary of model one and run that. Now at the bottom, 
hopefully you could see it. I did the summary and it gives me the formula, the residuals, the median, all that. But what I'm interested in is the p-values, right? The, the p-statistic. Now I know you don't, you might not know what that means, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Let me zoom in on the right spot here. So these p-values here, you can see that the intercept doesn't have one, but the intercept really doesn't count. So ignore that. But the DRAT, it does have a p-value. So this PR, it actually stands for probability. The probability that it's greater than um, a certain threshold, right? And so for now, for today, let's just pretend that you know everything about that. And these three, these three stars mean, oops, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. And these three stars mean that it's statistically significant, right? But let's not forget what we did here. We only had one variable to explain miles per gallon, and that was DRAT. So it really didn't have much to go by. So this is not that uh, useful yet, okay? So just keep that in mind. We're going to use this in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and change it from DRAT back to weight, WT. I'm going to run the plot again so we can see the plot. So there's the weight. And now in the model one, let's go ahead and change that DRAT to weight. Command enter. Let's see what the equation is. You can see there's an equation there. And then the summary. So again, we have weight here instead. Let me blow it up for you. We have the WT and we have three stars here, right? Just like DRAT. So they're both st statistically significant. Now I'm going to show you something that's going to maybe blow your mind, maybe not. <laughs> uh, in fact, I don't know the answer yet, but I'm guessing based on the plot of DRAT, it looked like it wasn't linear. So I'm going to add in my model, so you can see right here, in my model, I only have weight. Now, how do we add the drag to that? All we do, now you're going to be like, oh, that was easy, plus drag. Done. Model 1, command, enter. We can get an equation. Uh, wait, did that take something? Something might have been off. Let me try this again. Command, enter. Error, error, drag not found. Oh, drat. Phew, thought I was going crazy for a second. Drat. Okay, drats. That's what some people would say. Model one. Now we can see it. It shows both the weight and the drat weights. Now weight, weight, weight. But you get what I'm saying. The parameter weight and the WT will call it beta one, and the drat will call it beta two. The beta one for weight is negative four point seven eight three. The beta two for the drat weight is one point four four two. Okay, cool, still not that impressed yet, but now let's do our summary. Command enter on that, and I'll zoom in. Now let's take a look here. The three stars, remember I said to kind of ignore the intercept, don't worry about that so much. Now weight has the three stars, but drat doesn't. Notice that, okay? Now, remember, as I was saying, the, the weight, was significant and we saw on the chart on the plot that it was pretty much linearly lined up you know fairly well drat was not but when i gave them independently to the models they're significant because there's nothing else to go by there's literally nothing else to go by so when you put them together there's more statistics going on in the back end more probabilities and it decides based on that p value that probability value the, the uh, probability, uh, which we'll get into in probably the next tutorial. Maybe we'll start talking about hypothesis testing and whatnot. So I'm a little out of, out of, um, out of line here, but just know that the ones with the stars are the ones that you probably want to focus on to be statistically significant. What this is telling you now, let me, let me zoom in just a little bit. What this is telling you is that they're saying that the drat is not explaining the miles per gallon nearly as much as uh, the weight. But when you had that alone, that was all I had to go by, it had to say it was, it was statistically significant, right? And so when you have both of them together, it's basically telling you, do you want a complicated equation or do you want to make this a little bit easier? Because don't get me wrong, we're never going to be 100% correct. But think about it, if you have uh, 500 variables to pick from instead of just two, and you start saying, well, 
the computer gave me a result, but then you have to calculate that result for thousands of entries possibly, right? And that takes compute time and cycles, and that could get very complicated very fast. And it's hard to explain that to somebody. Oh, these 500 variables are causing this, you know, the revenue to go down, right? That's very difficult. But if you can really narrow it down to just a few explainer variables that truly have an impact, that's much more powerful for decision makers. So let's think about it that way. And that's really what I wanted to show you. We can add, let's go ahead and add one more to this. We have weight, drat, and let's add, what was another number? Let's take a look at the model. No, not the model, the data. Okay, another number is QSEC. We can do QSEC. Or just, yeah, we already did displacement. Let's take a look. We didn't do displacement. Uh, let's do displacement just for fun. So we're going to create a new model. It's model one still because I'm overriding it, but keep that in mind. Model one, it shows us an equation. But again, the equation doesn't tell us a whole lot, except for the fact that displacement is negatively correlated, and it's got a pretty small number. Let's do the summary. Let's see what really matters. Scrolling down or up. Intercept, ignore, weight. Now all of a sudden the weight has... Uh, only one star instead of three, the drat has none, and the displacement has a point, which the point I think means significant. Yeah, so th there's a number, a, a special number that people like to use is 0.05. When this p-value is less than 0.05, they typically will say it's statistically significant. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you exactly what all that means yet because it all depends on the circumstance, right? You like you want your airplane to be um, to never to never uh, crash. So a, a 0.05 percent failure would be pretty terrible still, right? <laughs> so it all depends on context. But in general, people tend to use a 0.05 as a threshold to be st statistically significant or not. And we'll talk about null hypothesis and rejecting the the nulls in uh, another episode <laughs> tutorial. But that's it. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you was as you add different features to your model it doesn't necessarily make the model before that any it doesn't have any relationship with the model before that right so the relationships all vary based on what you put in them they could all be great models in fact we still have no idea which model i know i call them all model one we maybe should have kept them separate we still have no idea which model is the best model because we didn't actually do any predictions with this so we'll get into that too but that was the majority of this tutorial. It was just to kind of give you an idea of you can add features to these linear models, sure. But again, scatter plots are really important because we're doing linear modeling. We're not doing some crazy vector polynomial modeling. This is just pure line. What line will go through these things? Um, so again, we did our aesthetic with weight and miles per gallon. That looks good. But let's go back to DRAT, and I'll show you again that it's not that linear. That's why it's probably not that significant, right? Compared to the other, compared to the other features. That's what you gotta note. Now, one more thing, just because I'm, I'm, it's on my mind right now, is I'm not sure if I showed you how to add a color to a ggplot based on a factor. So remember, I said like gear and carb were not really numbers. Like you can't have a 7.5 carb or a whatever a two gear. It's only three, four, and five gear, right? According to the data. So in our aesthetic, just for fun, just to put some color on our thing here, let's just do color equals, and we'll set it equal to uh, gear, right? Now, there's a problem with that, so I'll definitely show you. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, it, ah, different screen. Okay. Anyways, I'm in the way, so I'll get out of the way. And we have our color gradient here. And again, you can see some decimal values, and that's not cool. So we did something wrong here. So let's go back, if I can find it. Let's go back, and instead of using color equals gear, we're going to say color equals as dot factor gear. Add another parenthesis. Command enter on that. In fact, I wonder if the zoom is still there if I come over here. Yep. So you can see you can see that now it's as a factor, you only have three, four, and five, so three colors. Now the size is pretty small, we can fix all that too. But I just wanted to show you how to do that before we go too much further. 
Hope I didn't confuse you too much. We're gonna make these more clear throughout the next couple tutorials. Again, thanks everyone for sharing this. Thanks for liking it. Uh, I'm seeing some growth. I definitely enjoy that. And I will see you in the next episode in a few days probably.